Hello friends, in this video we are going to talk about antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, Aplas syndrome. Now, the Aplas syndrome is a very confusion point of students when they uh, learn this thing. I think it is not at all a confusion thing. You need to concentrate where you should remember things and where you should forget the things. That's why it's very easy. So let's go the video. Now, first of all, it is an autoimmune disorder and it is a systemic disorder. It is not just related to obsengaini. It's an autoimmune disorder and it is a systemic disorder. Why we are studying this syndrome into obstetric and gynecology? Because we got recurrent abortions. The Aplas syndrome is a very, very good, a very, very prominent cause of recurrent abortions. That's why we are learning this syndrome in obstetrics. Okay. Now, let's go for the pathogenesis. The students actually learn the pathology, pathogenesis very deeply. Try to learn that everything they try to learn, but don't try to do that. Just learn what you should learn. What happens in Aplas syndrome? There is an antibody formation against many molecules of coagulation system. It is an autoimmune disorder. So that's why antibody will be formed against what? Against the manager's molecule of coagulation system and because of this problem the end result what we got is increased coagulability and thrombosis vascular thrombosis it can be anywhere in brain in lungs in kidney in bones in placenta anywhere thrombosis can be happened because of this syndrome okay now what are the molecules of this uh, against which the antibodies are formed like anti beta 2 glycoprotein that glycoprotein is very very useful or very very active active molecule of this management of coagulation system Prothrombin is also obviously you know this thing. Prothrombin is the very very important factor of coagulation system. So somehow, somehow this antibodies will act and the end result what we get is thrombosis. Now the very pathogenesis of Aplas syndrome is still under study. So don't try to get deep into the pathogenesis. Okay. Just learn what that it increases the thrombosis in all the vessels of every system of body okay starting from placenta even cns heart lung kidneys bones everywhere it can do thrombosis so thrombosis in placenta now let's come to our our point of interest thrombosis in placenta happens that's why the blood supply to the fetus will be less and because of the blood supply to the fetus will be less there is a there is a incidence of abortion iud stillbirth iugr oligohamnesis preterm birth remember the fetus is morphologically normal otherwise the most common cause of abortion is what? Chromosomal anomaly of fetus or genetical abnormality of the fetus is the most common cause of abortion. But in this case, there is no chromosomal or any morphological abnormality. The, the, the cause of abortion is what? Decreased placental function, decreased blood supply due to thrombosis of placental vessels 
another very point is because of this thrombosis it in it inhibits trophoblastic invasion and you know my friends whenever the trophoblastic invasion is inhibited it causes pregnancy induced hypertension we will have a video on that and i will give very concept how the pih is there how the pih happens in this video now let's talk about very important thing what is the very important thing you should learn the diagnostic criteria two types of diagnostic criteria is there clinical criteria laboratory criteria for diagnosis of apla syndrome you need at least one clinical criteria and one lab criteria okay now let's see what clinical criteria are there the number one at least one episodes of one episode of vascular thrombosis now the vascular thrombosis can be anywhere in the body it can be myocardial infraction of or it can be a vascular necrosis of bone anywhere in the body one episode of vascular thrombosis should be present second criteria second clinical criteria at least one death of morphologically normal baby of more than 10 weeks as we discussed above morphological fetus is a normal fetus but still death happens at least one such incidence is needed for diagnosis the third criteria is at least one preterm birth less than 14 34 weeks due to due to uh, severe preeclampsia or placental insufficiency see not all causes of preterm labor can be taken as a criteria the only cause of preterm labor that should be what severe preeclampsia or placental insufficiency the fourth clinical criteria is consecutive three spontaneous abortions of less than 10 weeks this is another clinical criteria so among these four criteria you need at least one criteria for diagnosis and at least one laboratory criteria for diagnosis what are the laboratory criteria three antibodies should be uh, there or um, among these three e at least one antibody should be present in the blood consecutively continuously i am i am talking continuously see whenever there is a new antibody in the body it gets fed at at the uh, in three months but once we got the igg igg antibody it persist long life so what we are seeing here we need three we need one of these three antibodies to be persistent in our body the first one is lupus anticoagulant the second one is anti cardiolipin antibody the third one is anti beta 2 glycoprotein antibody one of these three antibody is needed and should be present with the test done 12 weeks apart okay so for diagnosis we need one clinical criteria and at least one laboratory criteria we need both criteria clinical and laboratory now what is the treatment the treatment is based on uh, based on what is the problem the problem is what thrombosis the problem is what hypercoagulation so what you do you inhibit the coagulation you do anticoagulation with the help of either heparin or low dose aspirin so these are only the treatment choice for aplas syndrome this is all for the aplas syndrome thank you